This is Connor the Cow. He's a Squishmallow, obviously. I've been doing a lot of stuff with Squishmallows lately. Today I'm gonna be making Connor the Cow, but it's gonna be a realistic version of him. Realistic. <laughs> Realistic anatomy, but with my kind of cartoony style. Realistic Squishmallow, but with artistic, artistic liberties. liberties. And for this massacre, I'll be using Nerdy Crafter's craft kit, which he kindly sent me. <laughs> Thank you, Jackie. This craft kit is heavy. It's huge. There's so much good stuff packed into here. If you want one, I'm putting a link in the description. There's limited quantities, so I wouldn't wait. First things first, I got out the plaster and the silicone mold. I'll be using these to make the base shape for my cow. There's also this silicone mold for wings included in the craft kit, but cows don't have wings, so I won't be using that today. Let's get started. The mold comes rubber banded, but I took those off. I wanted to make sure the seams are fully locked together. I think I'm supposed to shimmy the mold together to make sure everything's properly aligned. Is this shimmying? I then rubber banded everything together rather aggressively, which is probably where my troubles began. There are a series of unfortunate accidents you'll be witnessing today, which are entirely self-inflicted. I most definitely added way more rubber bands than anyone could ever need, but I wanted to make sure that nothing spills, so that's my excuse. I measured out how much plaster I need to fill my mold. I was being very careful, trying to shimmy the powder instead of compacting it. I didn't compact it. I didn't compact it. I did not compact it. This is not compacted. I'm gonna mix the plaster powder with water, so I filled up the measuring cup from my water cooler, which is probably a mistake. I think I'm supposed to be using like room temperature or lukewarm water, but too late now, I guess. A little more. Good. Perfect. Hindsight is 2020. I'm mixing the water and plaster together. Bubble, bubble. It's bubbling. Wouldn't she say like mix and flip or something? Turn and splat. Smoosh and stir. Smoosh and stir. Of course. By the way, don't forget to smoosh that subscribe button. <laughs> Thank you. For the mixing and pouring process, I'm supposed to be working quickly, supposed to speed things up, which is kind of hard to do when you're moving the camera around, trying to put in that aesthetic angle. I wanted to get some satisfying shots. Not that I achieved that, but that's what I was attempting to do. I did, however, shimmy the mold back and forth quite a bit to ensure the plaster got everywhere. I think I took too long doing this whole process, so my plaster did start getting goopy, but my mold was rubber banded really nicely and everything was perfectly sealed, so there's no leaking at all. So at least there's that. One hour later. Gently take all 85 rubber bands off. Gently. I'm scared. Oh god. With this craft kit, Nerdy Crafter sent me a note, part of which said, I'm so excited to see what you make with this four-legged beast, or three-legged, or zero legs. It's funny she mentioned that. Heavy foreshadowing for sure. All the legs are broken. Connor the cow now has zero legs. Which, you know, that's fine because Squishmallows don't have any legs. So really, no harm done. My fiance, who doesn't do art, who's never unmolded anything in her life, thought she could do a better job. So I told her she should try it because sometimes things are easier said than done. Two hours later, she comes to me with this. Hers has a lot of air bubbles. Look how smooth mine is. But mine has no legs, so there's obviously pros and cons to each figure. <laughs> Goes to show Nerdy Crafter's craft kit is beginner friendly, it's just not friendly towards me. <laughs> You'd think that now that I have a near perfect base, with legs intact, that my troubles would be over. But of course not. There's a lot more limbs left to break. Why do I regret this? So I'm gonna be turning this figure into Connor the Cow. Some of you guys suggested I sculpt a dragon or a unicorn out of Nerdy Crafter's craft kit, but the thing is I've already made a dragon, and I've made a deranged donkey who thinks he's a unicorn, hence the toilet plunger on his head. <laughs> Some of you guys thought the unicorn Nerdy Crafter showed was made by me, which I'm flattered you guys thought of me, but no, it's not mine. It does look really cool though, definitely has the bulging eyeballs that I love and the messed up teeth. I give a lot of my characters that kind of dirt cartoony look. That's just what I like. My Connor the Cow that I'm making today is also gonna look very, very derpy. I'm taking some artistic liberties with my version of Connor. This mold doesn't look like a cow yet, so I will be sculpting on top of it with some cosplay. Nerdy Crafter included a lot of clay in this kit. I won't be needing all of it today, so I sculpted on a head, gave it a little overbite situation, and then I moved on to the body. But then I came back and removed all the initial work I did on the head because I realized I forgot to use the clay adhesive. The clay adhesive helps the clay stick to the plaster base, so it's kind important. The clay was moving around a bit too much on there, so I had to rethink my strategy. Hence, the clay adhesive. 
I sculpted on an entirely new head and then started bulking up the body a little bit. Not too much though. It's gonna be a skinny cow. I think Nerdy Crafter's mold this time around is meant to be for like horse-like creatures or dragon-like creatures. She kept it pretty open-ended. You can build pretty much whatever you want on here, so I went with a cow. Cows have a slightly different anatomy from horses, and especially dragons, so I'm adding some clay to certain parts of the mold to make it look a little more like a cow's body shape. I'm specifically focusing on adding to the butt, shoulders, and neck. I'm bringing back the overbite situation. I find something so charming about overbites and underbites and just crooked teeth in general. Adds character. Cute, cute. While I was gently smoothing all that out, one of the legs decided- one of the legs decided to part ways. Oh no. <laughs> oh. That's my bad. I don't even know how it happened, but I know it's my bad. I'm guessing I need to be more careful. It is what it is. It's a learning process. That's what we're here for, to learn. To clarify, I'm the one doing the learning. Don't try to learn anything from me. That would be a big mistake, <laughs> clearly. I'll take care of the missing leg later on. I've got plans for it. Anyways, despite that loss, I'm still pretty happy with how it's looking. Well, I think it's looking good so far, so. Does it not look exactly like it did before? I'm adding some eye holes and some nostrils to the face, trying to make it look more like Connor the cow with every passing moment. But like I said, I'm taking some artistic liberties. This is my artistic interpretation of Connor the cow. What he would look like if he wasn't a Squishmallow. Nerdy Crafter included plenty of clay tools in her craft kit. Some of them are even rainbow themed, which go perfectly with my scissor collection. We've been thinking on the same wavelength. I then went around and added his pearly whites along with an upper lip kind of folded over him. I'm not sure if you're allowed to or not, but I've been using the clay adhesive to smooth out this sculpture this whole time. It seems like it's working, so I just keep doing it. Clearly I'm no expert. I also used the clay adhesive to stick on some bulging eyeballs and some horns. There's a lot of confusion about Connor the cow. Apparently if you're a cow, that means you're a girl. A boy cow is called a bull. So according to you guys, Connor's apparently a girl. So yeah, that's why I'm giving him some udders. Hope that works for everyone. I'm just trying to keep everyone happy. Connor's udders are very prominent, and that's because... because. The point is, he's a cow, so therefore he has udders. Let's just leave it at that. <laughs> Using some of Nerdy Crafter's armature wire, I'm crafting a tail. And about that missing leg, I'm making a bone just sticking out of there, in memory of that lost limb. I sure hope I don't break any more limbs off. <laughs> Have mercy, please. Luckily, I didn't lose any more limbs in the oven, so at least I've got that going for me. The kit comes with this primer, so I'm getting Connor all primed up for some airbrushing. The primer's white, and Connor's a mostly white cow, so I don't know if you're gonna be able to see much paint showing up. But rest assured, I'm airbrushing. There's been another casualty. For those of you keeping count, I think this is my sixth leg that I broke. I'm I'm very embarrassed. I really am trying to keep all of his legs intact. I'm gonna keep this one off for now while I paint it, but I'll fix things later on. The Squishmallow form of Connor the cow has like two black spots. I'm going to assume that if he wasn't a blob, then he'd have more. So I'm taking the artistic liberty to add a ton more. The paint job is pretty simple for this. Mostly just black and white. Looks like a standard cow. Squishmallows really don't stray too far from the norm. Most of them are pretty basic looking, but that's what I like about them. Simplicity is key when it comes to Squishmallows. Boring, but beautiful. Connor the cow and I go way back. I've customized several outfits for him, I've needle felted him, I've even cut him open. And it's all been a great privilege. Today I took it one step further and broke some of his limbs. It's been fun. I really like these paintbrushes Nerdy Crafter always includes with these kits. They're honestly some of my favorite paintbrushes. There's a lot of good stuff in this craft kit. I'll include a link in the description if you're interested in getting one. There's limited quantities, so do keep that in mind. If you wait too long, that's on you. I'm sculpting a little bell for him. I realize he doesn't usually have a cowbell, but I added it anyways. Today's all about artistic liberties. Honestly, it's always all about artistic liberties. <laughs> I glued Connor down to the base, and then I attached the bell. At some point, I reattached his leg too, so that's back. Varnished everything with the airbrush, and that's pretty much it. This is honestly one of my favorite sculptures I think I've ever made. He's very derpy and slightly disturbing. Everything I love, honestly. Last time I used Nerdy Crafter's craft kit, I sculpted a cat, and then one showed up at my door. I'm really hoping this freak doesn't show up at my door, but stay tuned, more to come. Thank you so much Jackie for sending me this craft kit, it's been amusing working with it. After that entire journey and after I just finished editing and everything, you wouldn't believe what just showed up at my door. Thank you universe.
I needed this. The universe requests your subscription. Do it. 